Our topic that I want to talk about uh, with Claire today is uh, women and going into this transition of menopause. Welcome to another Fit Doc podcast. And I am in this beautiful home, I would call it almost a resort, at Randy and Claire Moreau. And so they're good friends of mine. Uh, we, I met them in the bodybuilding community. Um, she is an IB Pro Bikini uh, in the Masters division. Very, 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 very successful in the division. And I find her very inspiring. I've always admired you. Oh, um, you have an amazing presence on social media. You're educational. You, you live the lifestyle. You inspire so many women. And so I really wanted to do this topic, and I'm, I'm just so thankful that you picked, uh, you, you said yes. Absolutely. Last minute. Last this minute. This is my favorite thing. Let's talk about it. <laughs> I appreciate it. So um, congratulations on your new book. Oh, I mean, thank you. that is just really, really cool. You can find this on yeah. Amazon. It's Fluffy to Fit. And if you can believe that, if y'all can see this camera, get that camera on here. But this is her. This is like when you're like just last year. Uh, yeah, that was well, actually, I was 48, and then one you're yeah. pointing at. And then my fluffy photo, I was about 38. Incredible. So yes, you can do it. So Absolutely. super, super awesome. Congratulations on Thank that. You. And you can find that on Amazon. So our topic that I want to talk about uh, with Claire today is uh, women and going into this transition of menopause. And so this has been a, I, I told you earlier, it's kind of like a rabbit hole for me. Yeah. So my wife, and if y'all know my wife, her name, her name is Corey. She's and uh, <laughs> I'm a big fan of hers, as you guys know. But um she, I think she had her first hot flash about two months ago. Aren't they fun? <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, we talked about it and then, uh, you know, she's, uh, I, she, I, I put a lot of attention into her. And so I went down this rabbit hole of like, how do we, how do I get prepared for her? You know, what can we do to help her feel better? You know, how's this going to affect her bodybuilding career? You know, how's this going to affect her mood? Our relation? I'm, I'm, I started freaking out. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so anyway, I kind of went, you know, DEF CON 5, and I went full YouTube University. I got a bunch of books, and then this has kind of been my rabbit hole. And so I have learned a ton of information. watched a lot of your videos, actually. Aw, thanks. And um, so we have a topic now for women. There's a lot of women in this world that go through this transition. Everyone goes through this transition as a female. And um, unfortunately, historically, there's, there's been some time in um, – and society that we've just kind of ignored and ha made women suffer. Wouldn't you yeah, agree with that? Absolutely. Technology has been lagging until yeah. recently. Yeah. And it's been rather disappointing, actually, yeah. you know, for women. Very. Because as you get older, and a lot of women don't know what's happening. Why am I getting all this belly right. fat? My energy is just tanked. Yeah. I'm losing my hair. Um, goodness, uh, my libido left the journey two exits ago. Right. And, you right. know, things like that just yeah. pop up. And uh, they just don't know what's happening. And it just gets worse and worse and worse over time and it usually starts in your 40s um it perimenopause what it's right. called and then progresses to menopause so yeah. good times <laughs> right nobody escapes it and you know if you have a hysterectomy you get surgically put into menopause which is even more fun right. for those poor ladies but uh yeah so you know it's just a journey for all of us you know yeah. getting those hot flashes or the devil so you know women going into menopause let's talk about what is it you know these symptoms you just mentioned a bunch of them so yeah. Why we get all these symptoms? So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna let you know the woman talk right. about it. But it's basically your hormones getting jacked up. It's the best way to describe it. Um, you know, your estrogen and progesterone start fighting with each other. Your estrogen starts dropping. Your progesterone, those two balance out each other. So when your estrogen gets too low, estrogen is produced in your fat cells. So guess what happens? Your body starts freaking out in your late 40s to 50s when you get into menopause. Um, when your estrogen gets too low and it starts storing all this belly fat. Um, and in order to produce more estrogen, but it doesn't work. <laughs> so we end up with all this unnecessary belly fat out of nowhere. Usually it's visceral, but it can be both. And, uh, you know, women are like, my diet hasn't changed. My exercise routine hasn't changed. What is going on? Why am I getting all this belly fat? And that's the biggest thing. Um, and then the hair loss from, you know, the DHT that can form um, in the scalp from that stuff. And, uh, yeah, good times. So, you know, there's so many things I can go into on how to fix these things if you want me to. But, uh Men's Rogaine is what I recommend. Men's Rogaine, pumpkin seed oil actually helps a little bit. Um, and uh, PRP for hair loss has been amazing. I've done it several times because I've been that down that rabbit hole, losing hair. And mine was mostly from my thyroid because I've been 
round and round with my thyroid. And that's another thing. Your thyroid starts to go. You know, literally the hormones are the wiring in your body that control absolutely everything in the body, um, from your metabolism to your libido to your energy to your weight loss, you name it. It controls everything. And when those wires start to blow, and they do, yeah. that's what happens. We get all these symptoms. Yeah. I'm going to emphasize that point is that the hormones of the, especially the female body, are so intertwined. Oh. I mean, you have estrogen, progesterone, you have testosterone. Women actually yes. make testosterone too, right? Absolutely. Um, you have the thyroid hormone, you have growth hormone, and like all these yes. things become out of whack. And what, what you know, I'm a just from a physician standpoint. So yeah. physiologically what happens is the ovaries just kind of burn out. Yep. And the dominant estrogen molecule is called E2 estradiol, and that just kind of <laughs> just peters out. But it doesn't peter out like this. Right. It goes, and it just just constantly spikes. And so you get these random kind of hot flashes, random symptoms at first, and it's very, very consistent. And all these kind of, you know, stuttering kind of aspects of the hormones fluctuating is what really kind of makes women miserable from Absolutely. what I understand. Absolutely. And so your body's kind of trying to kind of compensate when it stutters, it produces something else and something down to balance. And then you have this kind of, this, it's just chasing its tail, it seems like. Yes. Until it's finally the, the ovaries just kind of finally just give up and then you have more of the, as uh, the estriol, which is the E3, comes from fat, from women's fat. And that's what's really important to understand for those people under trying to get an idea of what's going to happen in menopause is that your body composition will change. Yes. Right? And yes. that's just like you said, the visceral fat. Absolutely, the visceral so fat. So your, your body composition changes as your estrogen comes down. It's actually a protective anabolic hormone for women. It's protecting lean mass. It's, it's protecting your bones. Mm -hmm. Like everything just starts kind of just falling off and so that's why it's so so important um we'll get to it later about exercising and nutrition it's kind of compensate for the you know the, the decreasing in the hormones for women but the the composition of the female body is um is something i feel like we can hopefully teach people how to slow it down absolutely absolutely and also estrogen is it's skin too because our skin gets thin as we get older and as your estrogen starts to decline estradiol um your skin gets thinner too so you know that's where hrt comes in to really help you feel, but not only feel better, but look better. Um, and then, yeah, your muscle mass, you mentioned that. Yeah, we lose 8% of our muscle. Listen up, men and women. We lose 8% of our muscle every decade over the age of 40 until we get to 70, and then it's 15%. So if you're a guy or a woman, you're going to end up like, you know, see these older people walking around by no fault of their own. They're hunched over because they've lost so much muscle. And it's, it's sad to me to see that. But nowadays, the technology is finally starting to catch up. Um, you can fix that it, by HRT, lifting weights, and then eating the right amount of food and a lot of protein as well. So that's the key to longevity of getting older and not getting uh, frail as we get older. Right. So that leads into the great topic of food and nutrition. Yes. And so, you know, there's this old saying of you are what you eat. And I think it becomes even more important as we age. Absolutely. And so for the, for, you know, all the studies and, you know, this is more I read and you keep hearing this over on, like I call it YouTube university is that all the studies on nutrition and the aging person is all male dominant. Yeah. They don't really look at women. I know. And so it's just unbelievable to me, but really the, the research showing for women is even more, more important for women to kind of modify your eating so yeah. more protein right more protein carb carb selection let's talk about timing so I, this this lady right here is a pro i mean Aww. she's been doing it for a very very long time and just her transformation alone can t as a testament to that but i want i want you kind of teach everybody like what are the secrets secret tips to changing your your lifestyle and nutrition and that and Food. Absolutely. Protein. Number one, you need one gram of protein per pound of body weight or goal weight. So if you're, if you're a fluffy girl and I say that lovingly, but if you're over 200 pounds, go for your goal weight and grams of protein, hundred um, percent. A lot of people don't talk about that. They just say one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Um, <laughs> excuse me. No, yeah. <laughs> if you're fluffy, you need to, you know, not get it quite that much. Um, and don't ladies, men, please don't be afraid of the carbs. You just need to choose the right ones. Um, the healthy carbs. I'll be glad to send you a long list if you want. DM me on Instagram. I'm happy to help. Um, I do this all day long and I love it and I love helping people. So eat the healthy carbs, sweet potatoes, Japanese yams, rice, all that is good stuff. Um, you know, and the healthy fats as well. And they all work together. Um, if your calories get too low, you're going to start losing even more hair and you're going to feel like a bag of ass with no energy. <laughs> so be really careful with that. You don't want to end up, you know, bald with no energy. <laughs> Trust me. Um, so yeah, you want to make sure your nutrition is totally on point. Um, I'll be glad to help with any of that, but, uh, 
keep that protein high because that's what's going to help you keep the muscle and add more muscle to you so you don't end up squatting down in Walmart and now you can't get back up. <laughs> Been there. Yeah. <laughs> when I was like that, that happened to me. Yeah. I looked around and was like, this is not happening again. No. Yeah. <laughs> I was uh, talking to one of my patients the other day and, you know, she, I think she hit the point where she's like, I need to make a change in my life. Yeah. So can you help me? And so I kind of, you know, I try do the best I can to, to kind of give the condensed versions of it. Yeah. But she, one of the, one comment she had for me is like, I can't eat that much protein, Dr. Morales. I just can't eat that much. And so talk about some great options of protein. Let's, Absolutely. Because sometimes people get overwhelmed. They see this number like, oh, I got to eat 200 grams of protein. Are you kidding me? Like, there's just no way, right? Yeah. So let's talk about options and protein. Absolutely. It sounds like a lot, but once you get into the routine of it, it's actually not. I always recommend you eat at least three to five times a day. Um, myself, I eat four to five times a day, sometimes six if I don't get enough food in. Um, I am five foot four and a half, so I'm a counter climber. I am not very tall. <laughs> and I get about 150 grams of protein in per day. And this is how I do it. I eat every three hours. I eat chicken, egg whites, one egg yolk a day to get some fats. I eat some almonds, which isn't a very good source of protein, by the way, but it's a good source of fat. Um, I eat turkey, uh, lean ground Turkey is great. It's one of my favorites. Variety. Um, you eat a lot of variety. Oh, I do. Wow, that's and fantastic. I'm writing a cookbook next, so that'll oh. be. I'll have all my recipes. Of course you in are. It. <laughs> kept me lean for years. Anyways, um, so yeah, just you know, anything the natural foods. Stick with the natural foods. Eat the, the foods that nature made, not the food that man made, because we screwed it up. However, yeah. I will say this: um, I do like um, protein powder sometimes, but there's one specific type I like because I'm lactose intolerant, which most of us are as we get older. Um, that has digestive enzymes in it. Um, it's just my personal favorite. I'm not plugging it. I'm just telling you what I eat. I'm yeah. not that shit fluencer that's going to tell you something that she doesn't do herself. Just saying. Love <laughs> anyway, the real talk. I I'm love just, it. I'm just, I'm just being real here. I've been using this stuff for eight years. It's called Devotion. Um, it's one of my absolute favorites. And I make treats with it. So I make like a protein pudding and I put mm. some almonds in it. And you know, by the way, on my Instagram, I have a ton and my TikTok. I have a ton of recipes if you want some good recipes. But anyway, um, so just things like that. So you just got to figure out, you know, first off, how many times a day do you want to eat? And plug in your macros. So let's say um, your macros, you want to eat 1,700 calories so a day. We're talking to people that don't know. What is yeah. a macro? What is a macro? Yeah. People are, a lot of people ask me, like, what is this macro thing? Like, how many calories should I be eating a day, Dr. Morales? And so and if you believe in the macros, some people yes. don't. You know, some people yes. don't. Um, but, you know, the bare, bare minimum number of calories, what, what do you think the number is? Well, first off, don't go below 1,300. Exactly. Because That's like the magic number. Exactly. I'll tell you why. This is important. Here it Listen comes. up. Your body requires 1,300 calories to run itself. Your skin, your hair, your organs, all of it. Just sitting there doing nothing. Doing nothing. Just yeah. laying in bed. Absolutely. And so many women I talk to go below that, and yeah. they wonder why they start losing hair. They have the energy of a damn sloth. Mm -hmm. um, you've got to be so careful with your body because um, you need those calories to run your body. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to eat, okay? This 1,200 calorie a day crap, no, 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 no. That doesn't end well. It's unbelievable <laughs> that people do that. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah. Um, it's horrid. Um, so yeah, don't go that low for sure. Um, I, I personally, you know, your macros depend on, on your activity level. So if you're five foot eight, what is your activity level? Yeah. Are you a male? Are you a female? Um, the best way to figure it out if, cause everybody's scratching their heads going, well, how do I figure mine out? Right. Um, Look for an online calculator. I do happen to have one in my, I hate to say this, my Lincoln bio. <laughs> Get into my Lincoln bio. I hate saying that. It sounds so influencing. I am not a shit fluencer, okay? Um, anyway, <laughs> if you go to there, I have a free one. It's a macro calculator. I have a calorie deficit calculator. Sometimes your numbers come out a little different for the, the total yeah. amount of calories. So take that number and average it. That's what I tell people to do. But whatever it tells you to do, um, sometimes the protein might be a little bit high. I'd be glad to help you with that. But anyways, um, start there. And then take that number. And divide it out throughout the day by how many meals you have. So if you're eating three times a day, you take your protein number, which might be 150, just to throw it out there. Yeah, right. um, divide it by three, right? Mm -hmm. And then same with the carbs and same with the fats. That's how you figure out your portion sizes and how much to eat. There you go. So macros, just kind of nutshell. You have proteins, fats, carbohydrates, carbs. Yeah, right? sorry, did I not say that? <laughs> so, you know, how, how you get adjusted and the timing when you eat protein, the timing when you eat carbohydrates... You know, for Corey and I, like when we got into bodybuilding, that kind of opened our eyes into yes. nutrition, right? Like when, when is the most efficient time to eat carbohydrates for your body to burn and not store fat? Yeah, right? absolutely. So if you're going to be one of those people at home and you're eating like a whole thing of pasta right before you go to bed, that doesn't not well. a good idea because your body sees that and like, oh, we got all this food. I'm going to go and store that as fat. So, yeah. you know, key, key time. Let's, let's talk about that real quick. Key time of eating carbohydrates. When do you, when do you eat carbohydrates most? 
So as, I want to touch on this first. As we get older, our digestion slows down. Our liver processing of food slows down. That's why you get bloated easily. And if you're under eating, that will cause bloating too, by the way. And so will food intolerances. Anyway, um, so the, what I do is, you, again, you want to have protein every meal. So don't skip your protein. Um, in the morning is a good time to have steel-cut oatmeal, for example, is mm -hmm. really good because it's slower digesting. It doesn't right. spike that glycogen like crazy. Now, you, anytime you eat your your, your, your glycogen is gonna that's what that's what our bodies do right. okay when you see all these shitfluencers on tiktok and instagram oh my god it spikes your insulin <laughs> well duh that's what your body does <laughs> that's what happens when you eat i mean that's just part of it right so um keep that in mind all right uh so i do steel cut oatmeal i do egg whites um one whole egg in the morning and then a few hours later i might do um, some chicken with sweet potatoes and that will be my pre-workout meal um and i'll usually eat that about an hour before we go train Okay. Because you need the carbs in your system to help you push. This is what a lot of people don't understand when they lift weights. They don't Listen understand. Up. Yeah, Listen this up. is important information. This is very important information. And people, I swear, don't believe me when I say this, mm -hmm. but it's super important that you eat your carbs an hour and your protein before you go lift. Because if you're trying to build muscle and you're trying to recomp your body, lose fat, and build muscle at the same time is what, what, I'm, what I mean by when I say recomping, your carbs act as your engine. They are your fuel, Right. So that fuel goes in the glycogen that your body turns the carbs into glycogen goes into your muscles, fills out your muscles so that you can push in the gym. So we get bigger muscles, more defined muscles as they get bigger and, you know, grow. So to do that, you need to make sure you're feeding your body and you're not going to be able to push higher and higher weight if you don't fuel your workouts. So, so many of these ladies and probably men too are doing fasted workouts. Not good. Oh, for sake i'm sorry i had to say it uh, don't do it just don't do it like fasted cardio is fine just eat right after fasted workouts no you're it's, it's not gonna end well i tried it no you're not gonna have the fuel to totally push. gas just totally gas yeah you I, just, you're gonna be dragging ass all over mm -hmm. the gym you're just not gonna be able to push try to go push a leg press you know with two or three plates on each side with no fuel in your system. It just won't end well. It just won't. I agree. Even I if you agree. had a huge cheat meal the night before, you still need some fuel in your so system. So how much carbs do you eat after, after you work out? Yeah, same thing. Within an hour, I would say within an hour or, or so. Um, I, again, I'll do uh, ground turkey, actually, and I'll do um, brown or white rice. Now, white rice is great post-lifting because it's fast digesting, so it gets into the muscles really quickly. So it's a good one to have. Uh, sometimes I'll do brown rice, which is fine, too. <laughs> so you could do either one. Um, is great. So I keep my carbs really earlier in the day. I generally don't have a lot of carbs after three o'clock, but I'll have a little bit starchy carbs. I'm not talking about vegetables here. Um, that's my routine that works great for my body. Um, when I'm trying to lean down, if I'm going to do fasting cardio in the morning, you don't want a lot of glycogen running around your body. So, or in your bloodstream from a bunch of starchy carbs, because when you do fasting cardio, your body technically reaches for the fat stores to be burned as energy versus the glycogen that might be in your system. And that's the premise behind fasted cardio. Now you're going to see, I'm um, probably got people saying, well, they said on TikTok, you know, they're coming. <laughs> oh, they're going to, oh my, I, wait a minute. They said on TikTok that, that it's no difference between doing post lifting cardio and fasted cardio. And technically there isn't, but you know what? There's a reason why the bodybuilders do it. <laughs> it works. I'm telling you, but the most important thing other than cardio is getting enough steps in per day. So I would recommend, especially for you women, well, men too, 10,000 steps a day. Get a watch, track it. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Where do we burn the most energy? Our all-day activity, walking the mall, grocery shopping, playing with the kids, running the dogs, whatever you're going to be doing, right? Me fidgeting that I do. You know, I'm burning calories mm -hmm. doing that. Um, so yes, your body is always constantly burning calories. So get your steps in. That's where you're going to see the biggest difference. Um, you know, when we, my last prep, I was in full-blown menopause and I was 50 years old last summer. And let me tell you, I got, I started with 10,000 steps. By the time I ended my prep, I was at 13 to 14,000 steps. So it does work. I'm telling you, I didn't do a ton of cardio in my last prep. I really didn't. We just brought the calories down slowly, but surely. And you need a professional for this. When, you know, when you're trying to get real shredded on stage, you need a professional to help you. It is not healthy to stay that shredded. And we don't stay that shredded all year round for a good reason, because you'll start losing your hair. You'll have no energy. Um, it's just, it's just not healthy to stay that low a body. I mean, that's a whole separate topic. That's a whole separate time. Went off on a tangent. I mean, oh my gosh, you know, yeah. bodybuilding athletes that compete year round just yeah. blows my mind. Yeah. I don't know how they do it. I don't, I don't know, but all right. So let's talk about this real quick. Cause this is really, I found this in my another rabbit hole went down to is the gut microbiome. Oh yeah. 
like uh, bloating for women. I mean, I've seen a lot of bodybuilding ads. You see up there, they look pregnant. Like that's a, there's, and come to find out, they have like food allergies or have food intolerances. And then now there's this whole thing of like getting tested for food allergens yep. and people. I mean, one of our good friends, she's like allergic to turkey. Like how do you? Oh my god, it happens. Another one's aller- allergic to eggs. That like, happened to me. It takes so like for us like muscle egg is like life. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, love that stuff. I mean, we couldn't imagine like, but um. It's uh, to me, you know, the physiology behind, you know, as menopause, women going to menopause, you actually have, um, you kind of get like a leaky gut. I don't know if you knew that, but you kind of get a leaky gut. It's, so it associates to having uh, the microflora in our, in our intestines kind of change and get altered. Yep. And you exponentially make it worse when you introduce foods that cause inflammation. Yes. So let's talk about foods that cause inflammation. Oh, let's go there. <laughs> let's do it because people don't quite, I mean, the Western diet's awful yeah like, it really is awful yeah the bodybuilding diet is probably about the cleanest you can ever get it's so true um but it the hard part is like liking this food that's really the hard part for most people trying to do a bodybuilding diet like actually liking the food but i'm telling you there's tons of recipes and you have a bunch of them I'm sure oh yeah that you could share but um let's talk about uh the inflammatory foods that cause problems with uh, the gi digestion i'll give you an example as we get older a lot of us get lactose intolerant right so the hot flashes, ladies, pay attention to this. When you eat dairy, for example, when I eat Greek yogurt, and I love my Greek yogurt, and I don't eat it very often, but I love it. The second I ingest that stuff, I mean, three tablespoons in, I get a hot flash immediately. Immediately. What does that tell me? That tells me that that food is inflammatory. So, again, these little shit fluencers that you see all over the place, oh, my God, dairy's fine. It is in moderation. Just pay attention. Moderation is in key. Moderation. That's a key word. Exactly. Key Just word. Pay attention because this is not something I eat every single day. Um, you know, you want to stick with, again, the natural foods, the food that nature made, not the food that man made because we skirt it up. <laughs> and you will have less problems. Sweet potatoes are very good for hot flashes, um, apparently. Um, so I eat a lot of those. They're awesome. They taste good. Throw them in the air fryer. They're amazing. Um, healthy food is easy once you know what to do. So there's, you know, many different ways you can cook your food. Like I do a crock pot chicken because it makes it so falling apart because there's yeah. nothing worse than rubber chicken, right? When you right. heat it back up again, oh, yeah. bloop, I can't. <laughs> so <laughs> just the crock pot chicken, heat it up for 40 seconds, throw some mustard on that mess or some Jehu sugar-free sauce, you're good to go. Um, that's usually what I do. My egg whites, I throw uh, Jehu sugar-free ketchup or uh, uh, pasta sauce, believe it or not, or... Um, uh, salsa or something like that. Yeah. You know, there's many ways you can dress up your food, but a, a lot of a lot of people, when they think healthy, they're like, you know, I got to eat weeds and berries. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> All right, ready for this one? Yeah. Artificial sweeteners. Let's uh, that, yeah. So artificial sweeteners will bloat you. They do mess with your gut quite a bit. Um, there's only one sweetener I found that's amazing. It's monk fruit sugar with no, no sugar alcohols in it. And there's only one brand I found that makes it, and it's called Purisur. Um, I've heard that one. Yeah, yeah. you got to try this one. It's not cheap, but it's, condi- you know, it's, it's uh, ca- uh, what do they call it? I uh, can't think of the word. There's like, I don't know, this much in there, but um, it lasts a while because it's very um, concentrated. Concentrated. Jeez, why can't I think of that word? <laughs> Thank you. And that's another thing that happens as we get older. Our memory goes. So there we are. <laughs> so yeah, that um, Pure Star brand is amazing. It has no sugar alcohols in it whatsoever. I have to look that one up. I don't know that Yes. One. I just, I found that, you know, um, you know, especially when I was in prep and I watched, you know, Corey's in prep too, but you know, as we get closer to the show, we, we start avoiding the artificial sweeteners, yes. you know, because they do cause, you know, physiologically, uh, this is another rabbit hole for me, is that the, it's not a natural sugar. Right. So our bacteria in our, in our, in our intestines don't know what to do with it. Yep. And it actually displaces the percentage of the different, of the two dominant types of bacteria in our, in our intestines. Right. And so it shifts it, and then you get this inflammation, which causes bloating. Yep. And then you, you kind of keep feeding it by doing more. As we get more into prep, you see the, the mistake of doing more and more artificial sweeteners to survive because you need the sugar. Yes. You need sugar. And it actually makes it worse. Yes. But So artificial sweeteners are infl- is an inflammatory, unnatural molecule in yep. our diets in the Western society. So, again, things in moderation, not that big of a deal. People are not in bodybuilding and prep, you know, not that big of a deal. But, again, just – understand you know and if you're drinking a, a whole 12 pack of diet coke Oof. that's a problem people that's a problem heartburn party of one yeah <laughs> um and I, I i mean there's tons of studies you know looking at this stuff now so they even think they might cause cancer one day who knows 
But I wouldn't doubt it. I know alcohol I, does. They've linked alcohol to cancer. That's true. I, saw, I taught, heard you talk about that. Yep. So let's talk about that. Alcohol. Oh, Stop let's. drinking alcohol in menopause. Oh, let's talk about it. Here's something you probably don't know. And if you don't believe me, Google it. Alcohol stops fat loss for 24 to 36 hours because it's a toxin. Okay, I'm going to go into why. It's a toxin, so when you ingest it, your liver has to process it right away. Therefore, it does not have time for any of the food you ate before, nor does it have time for the food you eat after. So guess what happens? It pretty much gets stored to fat. And that workout you did that day, the protein you're trying to eat, the protein synthesis goes Total down. Waste. Oh, like 60% or something. It's horrible. So this is why I only drink three times a year now because let me show you this book here when I was this fluffy. Three mistakes that I was making. Number one, I was drinking two to three times per week. And guess what? Yeah, that didn't end well. Um, I was under eating during the week and overeating on the weekend, and that ended up very fluffy for me. It doesn't end well. You don't want to under eat. Um, and then the third thing that was going wrong with me was my thyroid. My thyroid was jacked up, and I didn't know. Um, so that's back to the hormones. Make sure you get your hormones checked. You need a wellness doc for that, HRT doc for that. Um, I do have one that does telemedicine. Um, if you need their info, you can reach out to me yeah. on Instagram. You can message me. Yeah. Um, I'll be glad to help. But uh, anyway, so yeah, he's right. It can mess with your microbiome. Um, and also that leads to your cortisol spiking when your um, gut health or your sleep is off. Guess what happens? Your cortisol starts to get go up, and that is your stress hormone. Okay, and that can actually slow your weight loss down quite a bit. So really watch that too. Yeah, I mean, you... you Ran right into the next topic. I want to talk about sleep. sleep and yeah. cortisol really is this, this evil thing in our body. It is. It causes inflammation. It is a stress hormone. You know, women going into menopause, just, just the fact you're going into is stressful, right? Yeah. Um, your serotonin starts kind of getting shifted because estrogen's going down. And so that's why some women get put on SSSRIs, which are antidepressants, yeah. to keep it going. And that's one way to kind of help with the, the sleeping and also the, the hot flashes. But the reality of it is, is that if you can kind of decrease your, your stress somehow, you yes. know, avoiding foods that cause stress, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously in your environment, your lifestyle, both work and personal life. But cortisol is really one of those, um, it, it just can, can derail pretty much your entire physiology, really, it can. very quickly. It can. And again, it's related to your gut health and your sleep. So make sure you're taking digestive enzymes when you're with your food, because again, like we mentioned earlier, your digestion and your liver processing of food slows down. So the digestive enzymes are a game changer for that. They really are amazing. Um, and also a good probiotic. Um, that will help you as well. And prebiotic. Take all of those. You're going Which one do you take, it. pre or pro? I take both. You take both. <laughs> okay. Take both. okay. Yes. And digestive enzymes, I take it with almost every meal. Um, except my chicken and sweet potatoes. I don't feel like I have a problem with digesting that, but some of the other stuff I just, just to help me out. Yeah. Um, and it will help you with your bloating too. It's amazing stuff. Yeah. Um, um I'm gonna add to that fiber. Yeah. Fiber. Yeah. 25 fiber, grams. Fiber is a huge. So you definitely do want to do some fiber. I mean, I'm not really a greens person, but I used uh, whatever the powdered fiber yeah. yep. daily. And that does definitely kind of help things going through and yep. helps with the, the, the bloating and sensation like that. Absolutely. 25 yeah. grams of fiber a day. The, at the very least, if you yeah. can get that in, um, right. for sure. And track your food. Use my fitness pal or something. Track your food. It'll do it all for you. There, there's so many apps online okay. that you can find that help you with your food nutrition. But the next big topic, this is the good one, exercise. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about how important exercise in, is to women going into menopause. Let's, let's, why is it so important for women to exercise you know, consistently. Yeah, absolutely. Like we were saying earlier, get 10K steps in a day. That's number one. And lift weights. Ladies, guys, lift weights. You want to keep as much muscle on you as you can as you get older, I promise you. Um, it'll help your metabolism a little bit. It'll, you know, reshape your body. Um, you'll feel better. Just do it. You want to lift weights four to five times per week for 45 minutes to an hour. That's it. No longer than that. Your body can only take so much of lifting. Um, split up your body parts. If you need a good training split, DM me. I could send you one for free. I don't care. Um, but yeah, tr split up your body parts. And then if you're going to do cardio, do it either fasted and then eat. Don't None of this. You don't need to intermittent fast. Can we get into that next? <laughs> Ugh, don't get me started with that. Okay. And then, um, or do your cardio post lifting. Yeah. Why post lifting? I get that question a lot. Let me, let me fill you in on that. So you can get to the gym and warm up a little bit. That's fine. Just walk on the treadmill just to get blood flow. But you want to save your strength for your lift. Okay. So get through your lift and, um, your heart rate, it takes about 17 minutes for you to get into that fat burning phase, they call it, you mm -hmm. know, your, your, um, where your heart rate starts to get, it takes about 17 minutes. So once you feel that, um, you know, you'll be through your workout. Now that heart rate will go into your cardio. You're going to burn a lot more calories. Trust me, try it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to kind of expand on, I, 
I like physiology. Obviously, I'm a doctor, but um, yeah. the physiology of exercise to me fascinates me in uh, maintaining the human body um, as we age. Yeah. And the way that works is that uh, the hormones, both estrogen and testosterone also, um, help stimulate the muscles to stay active, right? So estrogen actually has a direct effect on myosin, helps reconstruct myosin, which is the, one of the fibers in the muscle cells. And it also helps with the mitochondrial function, which is kind of like our power plant of the muscle cells. Yeah. So this will lead into topic later about uh, replacement therapy, but estrogen helps, it's anabolic actually yeah. from women in, um, that are aging. So yeah. you want to stimulate the muscle, you want to increase the blood flow, you want to, want to train. And so I have patients like, well, Dr. Morales, I don't like weight training or I don't want to, I want to do CrossFit or I love running. I just want to run. Uh, you know, that's all, that's all fine and all. But the reality is, and there's a lot of research I've, you know, I've really kind of, again, I've gone down this rabbit hole. The research shows that uh, the human body responds to actually impact and weight training. Yes. It strengthens your tendon. It strengthens your bones. Yes. But the, the jolting, like jump roping, is probably the best example of it. Yeah. But that, that constant physical stress helps maintain our muscle mass. Yes. And again, when you maintain your muscle mass, you maintain your metabolism. And then you're able to kind of slow down the aging process, right? Absolutely. You have more energy. You sleep better. And then just, just try it. If you don't believe, just try it. Just try it. But, you know, really exercising is so, so important to, to the anti-aging process. I agree with that. So the, um, the women that are interested in exercising and don't know how to get started, you know, this, this woman right here on social media, TikTok, Instagram, you know, YouTube, she has all these, all these great exercises. Try them, please. Um, but again, weight training, if you look at all the different disciplines of exercising, weight training actually is the number one way to slow down the aging process of Absolutely. the human body. Absolutely. It really is. So, but so there's a lot of people out there like, you know, I don't really weight train. I don't know how to do it. And they're scared, right? They get yeah. scared to go in the gym. You don't want to look like a man. It's, it's very, very, exactly. I wanted, not, I wanted you to say that. Oh, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Let I'm me tell scared. you why. Because you don't have the hormones to make that happen. You don't have the amount of testosterone to get these big muscles. It just will not happen. So you're going to get better tone. You're going to get muscle mass, density. You're going to strengthen your tendons. You're going to strengthen your bones. Um, but don't be intimidated by the gym. Don't be intimidated by the waist. There's so many exercises you can do just in your garage. Yeah. Bands. Like, you should go watch her. Like, do all these exercises in her room. <laughs> I mean, the bands and the things the bands. you do, I like, it's just amazing. Too. Like, y there's so many things you can do with resistance, but it's yeah. all about resistance training with weights or some kind of resistance. Yeah. It's not, it's not running. It's not, you know, swimming. Swimming is great, but you need... You need physical stress on your muscles. And those, those cardio won't change your body. It, it, it may help you lose weight, but then you're going to look skinny fat, if you know what I mean by that. You know, yeah. no shape. So, yeah. you know, lifting will help you go literally from fluffy to fit. <laughs> that's the best example I can show. Um, it'll reshape your body. So that's what I'm getting at here. Um, so running, and I'll give you an example of this, will run the muscle off of you. Yep. Think of a marathon runner. They're long, lean, and stringy, right? Which is great if that's what you want to look like. I'm not picking on anybody here. Um, but if you want to look like that, that's fine. But if you want some shape to your body, you need to lift. Um, they run the marathon runners, they run every single day. So literally they're pounding the muscle into mincemeat. So it gets long, lean and stringy. Just like if you train and lift weights too much, your muscles get smaller because yeah. you're overtraining. And that's a thing too. That's a whole nother topic. But, yeah. <laughs> um, so make sure that you're not overtraining your muscles and that you're not overdoing cardio. Um, that you're resting appropriately. And you're resting. You know, we do need to take rest days. I recommend training four to five times per week. Um, if you're older, four is fine. Uh, I train five, but uh, I'm okay with four sometimes. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. If you're younger, you can get away with more than that. And I get this question a lot, Claire, how much do I need to train glutes? Well, that depends on how old you are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do it twice a week. That's it. Um, every four to five days is all you need. Um, when you're younger, you might be able to do that three times a week mm. stuff. But when you're older, good luck recovering from that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I want to kind of reemphasize the point you made earlier is that you don't need to train like hours in the gym at no. a time. It's like literally 30, 45 minutes. That's all you really need. Yeah. You do that three or four times a week, but you got to work. Okay. This is not, you know, working out and playing on Instagram and doing selfies in the gym. You're actually working. Yeah. Right. It's so important to make sure you're using your time efficiently yeah. and effectively because in the end, you know, let's talk about let's four hours in your week. Is it really that much time? 1% of your day. I mean, come on. Yeah. There's really no excuse, yeah. but you know, I find a lot of women and I talk to women, especially my patients that are just intimidated by the gym and they're yes. intimidated by like all these exercises and Dr. Miles, I saw this on TikTok and I, it can be overwhelming. So, yes. you know, give us, give us some tips on where to find good information on finding 
you know, exercises for really, the, we're talking about like to the novice people. I mean, yes. there's, our, there's our pros that are watching, there's our, you know, bodybuilders are watching this and are like, yeah, 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 that's what he said. But there's a lot of people that don't know. Like, they're just so intimidated by this whole process. Absolutely. Um, YouTube is a good source. I will say that. Um, mm. I have some workouts on mine. You can do my workouts. Your weights just aren't going to be as heavy as mine. I tell that in the beginning of my YouTubes. You can do this. Your weight's just not going to be as heavy. That's all. Um, so, yeah, just start. Just get started. If you can afford to hire um, an older bodybuilding trainer, I, I say older because usually they've dealt with injuries, which is a good thing, um, to help you get, a, get into a routine, that would be what I would recommend to most people to do. Um, but, yeah, you just got to get started and, and just, as Nike says, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, eat better and exercise. Weight train. Yes. So we're going to kind of talk about one of the last topics that, um, that is, I guess, the elephant in the room is uh, hormone replacement therapy. Absolutely. And so let, uh, I'm going to kind of elaborate the history of it, of how it, is, it has evolved in the past, you know, several decades. And so in the early 2000s, there was this uh, huge study, it's a woman's health initiative. And um, they found that um, it was a so hormone replacement therapy was, was associated to breast cancer and stroke and heart yep. disease. And then they flipped out, yep. and then they and then every, they got on the media, and then the media got hold of it, and was like, "Oh my God, it's hormone replacement therapy yeah. is terrible," and blah 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 blah. But the the problem is, is the the women that they were studying were actually not women going to menopause. They're all women in their sixties. They've already gone through menopause. <laughs> they're, they're already past it. But this is for the women going in. It was more. It should have been for the women going into menopause. Does they that make were sense? Also using horse urine. For you know, right. as, I mean, technology has really changed. So it, it's um, that that kind of set the set the whole kind of concept of a replacement therapy back, in my opinion. Yeah. And so a lot of women, in my opinion, have uh, kind of suffered needlessly. Yeah, I agree. Um, so now we're back in. We kind of got new technology now. There's studies on women and actually the the perimenopause date and the menopause going into that transition, and hormone replacement therapy. I think is, has has uh, really made leaps and bounds. Yeah. So. Finding the practitioners that are experienced with the replacement therapy is so critical. Yes, agree. Like some people are like, "Oh no, I can do. It. I'm too scared. You know, you know, I'm going to get you know breast cancer." So uh, don't be scared. You know, this is I've learned. I've read a lot. I'm telling you, people. Like my wife, when she gets to that point, I'm gonna make her comfortable. I, I see no issues with putting her on replacement therapy, but we're gonna do a lot of things first. We're gonna get her labs checked. We're gonna get her hormones checked. Yep. We're going to make sure everything is right on track. I'm going to test it very, very often because, it's again, it's going to start kind of puttering off and start yeah. sputtering. Yeah. So it's going to be titrated. It's going to be, you know, when she kind of goes into it, we're going to be kind of on her quite a bit. But once you get down to the kind of the cruise control, we'll probably be a little bit less. Um, but I really, really feel that uh, there is no reason to suffer. No, there's not. Um, I remember my mom, when she would sit down and go, Whew, and I'd be like, Mom, what's wrong with you? Yeah. She's like, oh, this she was British. Yeah. Oh, these bloody hot flashes is yeah. what she would say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So women kind of going into her life, you know, going through this process, and you've already gone through this. So yeah, what you, let's, let's talk about it. So what was your experience when you went oh, in? Oh, yeah. When you started um, looking into HRT? So I got in early, actually. So when I first started lifting and getting into to, uh, bodybuilding, my coach said, hey, you need to get your hormones checked about six months into it. And I'm like, Why? <laughs> why <laughs> i didn't know right and um as soon as the, i got all my blood work back i was like oh well my testosterone was low well at the time i didn't even know women had to i didn't know i'm not a doctor yeah. what do i know right um this was years ago but anyway um i had zero testosterone well good luck building muscle without that component women have natural testosterones in their systems just like men do just not as yep. much so when you're younger it's much easier to build muscle and really testosterone is kind of your natural fat burner so back then, um, I, I started replacing and getting on a little bit of HRT, progesterone. My progesterone was low at the time, mm -hmm. and that was in perimenopause. That was in my early 40s. And boy, did I feel better. I started sleeping better. And I kid you not, Dr. Morales, I kid you not, within two weeks of that replacement, I started to see my muscle just come in. There you go. Like, boom. Like, all of a sudden, that was what I was missing. Again, the wiring in the body. It's the wiring in the yeah. body. If you don't have those wires and they're all frayed and you know, looking like an old car, guess what? <laughs> you're you're going to have a hard time losing weight, keeping hair in your head, keeping muscle on you, all these things. So I learned the hard way. And as I went through, I started checking my hormones every six months. And as I started getting into my late 40s, that first hot flash, I was like, oh, okay, every three months is what I recommend. Um, there's lots of, cl you know, good clinics around, but just make sure they're reputable. I work with a couple of good ones, but um, if you can find a good wellness doctor in your area or a good PA or something, that's what I would recommend. Uh, but not every podunk town has one, right? Um, 
my doctors do telemedicine, but you know, you're you're welcome to DM me. Um, hopefully, they're everything will be good with that yeah. <laughs> going on because I know right. that the laws are changing on that too. So, um, yeah, definitely recommend HRT and don't be scared of it. It's all bioidentical nowadays. Um, I will say this: I don't like the pellets. Um, the pellets are these little things they slit your rear end open and stick them in there. Yeah. They last for about three months. I don't like them because um, you can't control them. What if you get too much of something? You got to get it taken out. Yeah. You know, you start losing hair because you're getting too much of this or too much of that. I much prefer the pills, the creams, small shot or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was reading a lot about that. Like the pellets, like the compounding pharmacy that are making these pellets, there's no regulation of them. And so you, they don't know the concentrations of like progesterone and estrogen. It's, it's very, I guess, pharmacy dependent. Yes. And it can completely vary. And you don't, there's no way to test like what's in them. I guess right. you can, but, you know, most people don't do it. So, um, yeah, I would, I would, I would second that. I would kind of stay away from the pellets. Yeah, um, and the doctors but, make a ton of money off of them too. Yeah. Just so you know, if they're pushing pellets, it's because they make a lot of money off of. Them. Yep. Is it covered by insurance? Common question. Ah, so um, the doctors I work with, uh, they do. Uh, some of them do cover the labs, but you know, insurance companies are always late to the party and. To be honest, women's health is really taking a back seat. God forbid if a man's winky doesn't work. Oh, sure, insurance <laughs> and all the you know doctors. Sure, we can take yeah. care of that. Here's a little blue pill. You'll be fine. Um, you know, but women with hot flashes, belly fat, you know, hair loss she's never had before, uh, low energy, low libido. Oh no, that's not covered, honey. I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry. Catch up. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of times it's out of pocket, um, but sometimes they'll cover the labs. Great advice. All right. So let's kind of wrap it up. Let's talk about kind of like the key points. Like what what would people really get the most value of like the best tips of advice before we, we kind of wrap it up? Yeah. Just make sure you're lifting weights. Um, I say four things you need to get fit. Okay. Lifting weights, number one. Add your steps and a little cardio, number two. Number three, hormone balance. It's just key to being healthy, key to longevity, key to um, feeling better, not feeling like a bloated bag of ass all the time and no energy and all that good stuff. <laughs> um, and eating the natural foods, that's number four. You know, make sure you're eating, um, if it crawls, swims, grows out of the ground, eat it. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't mean to say you don't go out to dinner and have a nice dinner with your other sometimes or whatever. Be careful with alcohol too. Remember I said it stops fat loss for 24 mm-hmm. to 36 hours, slows your protein synthesis, and it ages you, and it's linked to cancer, which makes sense. I want to touch on this. My Aunts, uncles, my mom, my dad all died of cancer. They all drank three to four times per week. That makes a lot of sense to me now yeah. since the recent research came out on this. And I'm yeah. like, oh, wait, no, I, I drink like, I don't know, maybe twice a year now because yeah. I'm just, no, I don't want, I don't want that mess. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Great advice. I'm going to kind of leave a couple extra points on top of yours, which yeah. are fantastic. But, um, you know, as women going into the menopause and this, uh, this uh, transition in your life, what all men we go through. Um, you're trying to make a change to live healthier, you know, eat better, and you're really hopefully inspired you to kind of start making these changes here. Um, but don't look at it as a weight loss. It's not weight loss. Look at it as more of your, your change. You want to change your body composition, and it's for your longevity. It's actually it's anti, it's the secret to anti-aging. True. I 100% believe it's the secret to anti-aging True. is eating better, exercising, and just avoiding these, you know, really the westernized diet. It's going to make a world, a world of difference in your, in your health. Um, it's in a, it can cure diabetes, right? Yes. It can cure blood pressure. Absolutely. Um, and hopefully people seeing you do the, make these changes will inspire others. Absolutely. And that's where I do, this is why I do the Fit Doc, you know, um, podcast is hopefully to inspire others to learn more information. You know, everything I say, I, I feel like it, I'm, I feel like I'm saying the truth. Absolutely. But I want you, I want to inspire people to actually make a change in their life to live a little bit healthier. Absolutely. How old are you now? <laughs> think about uh, 45. 45. Okay. And yeah. he looks great. I'm 51, by the way. My husband is seven, almost 70. And if you haven't seen a picture of him, go, go to my Instagram. You'll find him real quick. Um, anybody can do this. It doesn't matter how old you are. Yeah. My husband started lifting at age 60. I started at four, in my early 40s. Yeah. Um, anybody can do this. Um, feel free to pick up my book. It'll help you too. Go read the reviews on Amazon. Don't take my word for yeah. it. <laughs> That's a great point. So go look for help. Go find some help. Yeah. You know, it, we're not expecting you to do it by yourself. You know, YouTube is great. You know, there's books, there's yeah. resources, you know, finding a coach, a nutritionist, like all these things are great resources of information. Um, I want to leave you with the request. Just, just don't make these crazy goals, right? Like I want to step on a bodybuilding stage when I have a body fat of 30%. It just, you know, you can get there. It's going to take some time. Yeah, it takes time. But have realistic kind of expectations in your goals. Make little goals attainable. And then we start knocking down some of these goals you start climbing, right? You right. start kind of, you start knocking it down. The next thing you know, you lost like 30 pounds and you, 
you've changed your body composition, right? You go Absolutely. losing the visceral fat. All your muscles are full and tight and toned. And, yes. you know, and everyone's like looking at you like, holy crap. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> right. And you look younger, right? Yes. So I, I think that's um, something that I think hopefully people can take away from our discussion. So absolutely. You are what you eat. You said yeah. that you are what you eat and it comes through in your body and your hair, your skin, your nails. I had a couple of ladies come up to me in the store the other day and ask me what I did for my hair and that they follow me on Instagram and I want to know what you do for your hair. I'm like, <laughs> I take pumpkin seed oil and I eat healthy, yeah. you know, um, HRT. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it really does come through, you know, when you, when you feed your body right, um, when you drink a lot of alcohol, you eat a lot of sugar, your skin's not going to look as good. Um, there is a lot of truth to that, that you, you are what you eat. My mom used to say that all the time. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for, for doing this uh, podcast for with me. me. Thank you for opening your home for this i just really enjoyed it it's just so beautiful out here thank you um thank you randy for having me i appreciate it um so where can we find you okay so instagram uh at claire morrow underscore ifbb pro and i don't put an i in my name my mom had to be difficult c-l-a-r-e claire morrow's uh underscore ifbb pro same thing on tiktok same thing on um youtube youtube is just claire morrow ifbb pro um, a lot of my YouTube videos are very in-depth on, um, I've even got an interview with a wellness doctor on there though. So if you're really interested in the hormone part of it, go watch that. It's interesting. Um, and I've also got some meal prep videos there too. And go buy our book. Yeah. I'm telling you. Congratulations. Thank this is you. fantastic. So, so, so inspiring. So thank you so much, Claire. You bet. It's we been enjoyed a, it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. All right. It. Hope to do it again one time. We, we have so many other things to talk about. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Again, if you enjoyed this content, don't forget like and subscribe. Go follow us on social media, Instagram, TikTok now. Uh, stay tuned for more.